Hey guys, it's Kristen and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking to you guys about things that I think that people don't always know before they get into adopting a dog and having their own dog. Um, I grew up with a childhood dog and I know a lot of people grow up with dogs, but there's definitely a different... Um, it's different when you grow up as a kid with a dog where maybe your parent was the one mostly taking care of the dog or you were able to leave your dog at home a lot of the time. Different dogs are different. It just depends on your situation. But we just adopted a dog. We rescued a dog in January and I um, adopted the dog with my fiance, Matt, and he is the best dog. I know everybody thinks that about their dogs. And if you have a dog, then you totally know what I'm talking about. But if you don't have a dog, but you're thinking about getting one, I wanted to make this video because I feel like a lot of people know that dogs are amazing. I mean, how could you not know that dogs are amazing? And especially our generation or people my age, we grew up with social media and seeing everybody put everything online. So when we see all these people our age getting dogs, it makes it seem like it's not that big of a deal to own a dog or that it can't possibly be much work. Um, to own a dog if we're like, oh, such and such has a dog and she's fine. So certainly I could have a dog. That's not necessarily always the case. So I just thought that I would give you all my tips. This video is probably going to be really long because there's so much that goes into owning a dog and there's so many things that I think people don't consider before they get a dog. So without further ado, let's talk about things that you should know before you get a dog. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please do so already. I post videos every Sunday for you guys. And if you, at the end of this video, see any tips that are missing that you think um, people should know before they get a dog, please go ahead and leave those in the comments. And if you like this style of video of things I wish I knew before XYZ, let me know and maybe give me some ideas of what to do for those. Because um, I think that, uh, you know, it, people can make pretty hasty decisions and you know, it's one thing to buy something that's out of your price range and another thing to like bring a living, breathing, feeling, thinking, being into your life and then not being able to take care of that creature. So let's get started. So the first thing that you should do before you even start looking at pets to get is considering your lifestyle. So a couple of things that you need to consider are if you are active, are you a person that gets up and is always going hiking on the weekends or going backpacking or like crazy active stuff like that? Or are you a person that likes to just stay on the weekends and relax at home and have nights in? Both of those things are perfectly acceptable ways to live your life, but they definitely have an impact on maybe the size of the dog that you get, the breed of the dog that you get. Certain breeds are have a lot more energy than other breeds. So it's just something to think about um, in terms of your personal lifestyle. You also wanna think about your job um, or whatever it is that you do with most of your time during the day. Do you work from home where you can have the dog with you all the time? Do you have to go to an office? Do you have set hours? Are you on call all the time and can be called away at any time? Do you have weird, unpredictable hours? Do you work night shifts? Things like that are stuff that you want to consider before you get a dog and bring that being into your life. There's actually, I have like 20 questions written down. So other things that pertain to lifestyle are, do you go out a lot? So that kind of goes with the being active. Even if you're somebody that likes to stay in or you're not like going on hikes, if you're somewhere in the middle where like you like to go out to the bars, or you like to go to parties on weekday nights, things like that. If you're going places a lot where you can't bring your dog with you, that's something that you need to consider. And also don't just bring your dog everywhere. Make sure you know where dogs are allowed and where they're accepted versus like showing up and then having to not come inside or bring your dog in a place where other people don't want dogs. Do you have any animal allergies? Some breeds are hypoallergenic, so that's something that you can avoid, but some dogs might trigger your allergies if you have animal allergies, or you might not realize you have an animal allergy, in which case you should figure that out. Um, do you have kids or do you want kids in the future or the near future or, you know, somewhere in the lifespan of your dog's life? Um, some dogs are better with kids than others. And also you can, you know, kind of condition um, dogs to be more comfortable around different groups of people, even kids. But that's sometimes you have to decide if you want to take the risk because sometimes if they're scared, they might attack a kid. You just, you never know. 
Some dogs are better with kids than others, and if you rescue your dog, you usually can get information about how they are with kids, so that's just something to consider also. Another big thing to consider is your living space itself. So you can totally have a dog in an apartment, um, just depending on the size, but again, that's going to affect the kind of dog that you get because some dogs need lots of space um, or they have lots of energy and can do a whole lot of damage if they're given like this really small space to be in. If you don't have a backyard or don't own a house that has a big backyard, do you live near a park that you can take your dog to? Do, is there a dog park in your complex? Things like that are just something to consider before you get a dog. Again, it might seem like a lot of these things are kind of a lot to think about, but you definitely want to consider them because they affect the kind of dog that you would get or the size of the dog that you would get. So you wanna figure these, these things out before you start looking at dogs and start like getting attached to particular breeds or specific dogs. Um, make sure that your lifestyle is going to be appropriate for that dog and vice versa. The second thing, and I'm gonna lose track of numbers because as I wrote, after I finished this list, I like thought of all these other things to add in. So I'm gonna try to keep it numbered, but I'm probably not gonna do a good job. We'll see. But the second thing is to consider all of the costs associated with a the dog. There are definitely going to be unpredictable things. Like if your dog gets sick or, um, you know, something happens to them, you have to be prepared in some way. So that's just gonna be a matter of having an emergency fund, um, just like a general fund that applies to both yourself and you know also external things that come up, like your dog getting sick. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have savings for that. But the things that you can account for and can control are if you are renting the place where you live, whether that's an apartment or a house, figure out what the pet deposit is and what the monthly pet fee is. And also, once you can find a piece of paper that has those things, call up your landlord and make sure that those numbers are up to date and that those are the current prices so that you don't get slammed with a much higher fee than you thought after you've already you know, gotten the dog and have brought him home or her. And when it comes to that, don't even try. I'm like a huge rule follower, so like maybe I'm lame. I don't know. Don't try to cheat the system on that one. Some, I know in our apartment complex, if they find out later that you had an animal in your apartment and you didn't, you know, tell them and pay the pet deposit and pet fee, they'll assume that you had the dog for the entire duration of your stay there, your lease, and they'll charge you the monthly rent for your entire, you know, time that you were there. So if you've only had the dog for three months, but you didn't tell them and you... <laughs> have lived there for three years, they can charge you for that long. I mean, it's crazy, and I know that they probably wouldn't think that you actually had the dog that long, but still, just let them know and pay the fee and be done. Um, chances, and that's good because if your dog does do damage to the apartment, that's what that fee goes towards, um, so you could lose your security deposit. Just like, don't even, don't even try. Just pay your dues. The other things to consider are the monthly food costs for your pet. Um, any pet insurance that you choose for them, which I recommend pet insurance. I think we're still looking into it for Max. Um, and if you foster, if you adopt your dog from a shelter, they'll also let you know if he had anything that he was treated for. Sometimes they cover that cost or you pay retroactively. So just make sure that you know about that, um, which goes along with make sure you know the fees to adopt um, or to rescue in your area. It differs from shelter to shelter, but it usually covers them getting spayed or neutered, um, and then getting microchipped. If you do have a job where you work in an office and you're away from home for like eight to nine hours a day, um, then you might want to consider putting your dog into doggy day camp or like a doggy daycare type of thing. Um, we've done that a few times for Max on days that we were particularly busy. Other than that, we work from home, and so we're usually able to take care of him, so that's nice. But um, it it varies depending on where you take them. We take them to the PetSmart doggy day camp and that's about $20 a day. We've looked at other ones that are a little bit more expensive, but usually if you say, okay, I'm taking them every day for a week, then it, they give you like kind of a, a discount because you've you signed them up for so many days or however it works, just depends on the place. But make sure that they are taken care of during the day, even if they're roaming around, if you leave them at home, make sure that they have food and water, um, leave out wee-wee pads in case I have to go inside, um, but if you are going to be away from home, make sure that they have some interaction. <gasps> and speak of the devil, it's my Max. What else? So speaking of doggy day camp, my next tip 
is to make sure that you make plans of how you're going to help to socialize your dog. This is so, so important, especially if you have a puppy. Um, dogs need to interact with other dogs to be more comfortable around other dogs in general and not be hostile and, you know, growly towards them. Um, but they also need to be socialized with other people. So taking them to like a puppy play date session. PetSmart has so many weekend events where you can bring your dog and just have an hour of free play and meet other pet parents. So they get to be around other dogs and be around other people. And it just helps them to be more comfortable being outside in general um, and being around other people in general. That way, if they're ever let loose, they'll run right to another person um, and want to lick them and love them instead of like growling at them. We've had both of those experiences in our apartment complex where two different dogs got loose. One came growling, running at me, and the other one came running like just wanting to jump into my arms and be snuggled. A lot of times that can be changed with how they're socialized and how they interact with other people. My fourth tip, <clears throat> there's so many, is if you're adopting from a shelter, some shelters require home visits, so if you know that you want to rescue a dog, go ahead and schedule a home visit for the local shelters in your area. They'll just come out and make sure that you don't like, make sure you have a roof over your head and the dog has a place to stay inside. They don't want to adopt out to dogs that, or to families where they're gonna make their dog sleep outside, um, usually is what they tell people. They just wanna see that your home is fit for a dog. It doesn't really, I mean, our apartment is like relatively small and we were approved for the dog that we adopted. If you do this ahead of time, if you go to some sort of adoption event in the area where they bring shelter dogs to a local pet store, um, you can take home a dog that very same day if you've already been pre-approved for your, then like done your home visit and everything. Otherwise you have to wait and then you risk the chance of um, somebody else adopting a dog that you fell absolutely head over heels in love with. So if you can get it out of the way, just get it scheduled and have somebody come out and see the house and then go start looking at dogs and you can take one home that very same day. So to go along with that, number five. So a lot of pet stores like Petco, PetSmart, um, Pet People, all of these places will do adoption events. I know PetSmart does one the first Saturday of every month and they just bring local shelter dogs out where you can meet them and play with them and get to know them. Um, you can fill out an application for the dogs and then if you've already done your home visit, you can take one home that day and buy everything you need right there. Um, it's a great thing that they do and all different stores have stuff like that. So if you just you know find whichever animal stores are <laughs> close to you, pet stores are close to you, um, see what events they have coming up and you might just meet the dog that you bring home there. Um, so kind of check on those if you're wanting to meet dogs in person instead of just browse them online like on Pet Finder um, or just your local shelter website. But they do usually keep them pretty updated, so it's pretty good. My sixth tip is to take your time browsing different dogs before you bring one home. Make sure that you're compatible with that dog um, and that... You know, I think sometimes you can maybe fall in love with an animal that's not quite right for you at the time. I know I have when I've um, been to shelters and just like felt like I totally vibed with a dog, but it just wasn't the right time or, you know, it, it wasn't the right size dog. I don't know. For me at the time, I just really needed to not have an animal at the time. I didn't even live in a pet-friendly apartment, so... But still, it can happen and just be patient with the process and trust that the right dog will come along at the right time and don't rush into it uh, because at the end of the day, it can hurt the animal um, and that's something that you want to avoid even more than hurting your own feelings. The seventh tip is to dog-proof your home. <laughs> um, so this it seems pretty straightforward. Our dog is tall enough that he can reach all of the... Um, like the top of our dresser and the top of our entertainment unit and the top of our desks and the top of our counters. Like he can sniff out stuff and pull whatever is right on the edge of it. So we have to make sure that we don't leave anything that we find particularly valuable there or just anything that he could swallow um, or chew and damage or chew and hurt himself. Um, so that's what I mean by dog proofing your home. Other things are making sure that you secure any tall furniture like if you have a bookshelf that has tons of books on it um i have a little desk hutch that i've shown in my videos before if you have furniture like that make sure that you secure the top 
to the wall so if your dog is big enough to like knock it over he won't be able to knock it over or it won't fall on him i keep saying him because i have a he dog but your dog the dog that you love and own that's the one you want to protect and then also make sure that you don't get too attached to your furniture because no matter how hard you try you just can't dog proof your dog shedding hair on everything so just accept when you bring your dog home that there's going to be dog hair and everything. I'm a huge, like, if I see my own hair on stuff, I'm like, ugh, this is disgusting, I can't. And in the beginning, I was like, ugh, there's dog hair everywhere. But you get used to it, your dog's gonna get comfy and cozy. If you don't want animals on your furniture, just don't get animals. <laughs> I don't know if there's like any nicer way to say that, but dogs are only limited to your house pretty much or whatever living space you have. Like that's their whole world. So if you don't let them on your bed and you don't let them on your couch and you don't let them on in whatever corner they feel comfortable and cozy sitting or sleeping in, just don't get a dog. Okay, this is where my numbers get a little jacked up, so bear with me. Okay, tip number eight. Know what dogs are allergic to. There's lists everywhere. Like everywhere you can find a list. You can Google it. You can find a list on Pinterest that you can save or download to your computer or to your phone. And just familiarize yourself with the list of foods that dog can't have, particularly foods that you eat a lot or things that you eat a lot of that dogs can't have, just so you know that you cannot give them to your dog. There are a lot of human foods that dogs can eat. They can have like sweet potatoes, blueberries, um, I'm trying peanut butter. Our dog loves peanut butter. There's actually, um, anytime we get a peanut butter that we don't like, we just give it to Max. He loves it. So it works really well. We don't waste any food and he just loves it, eats it up. But it's just really important that you keep those things out of sight, out of mind. I know for us, um, being on keto, we do use liquid stevia or xylitol and dogs are, xylitol is very toxic to dogs. So any food that we eat that has it, we can't like leave the plate or the package on the side of the coffee table or just somewhere where he can reach it um, just in case there's any left in the wrapper. Um, and it's just a, an extra precaution that we take to make sure that he doesn't get into anything he shouldn't be eating. So number nine is before you go out and get any items for your dog, make sure that you do extensive research on what brands use non-toxic um, chemicals or ingredients in their food or in their treats before you go out and buy stuff. Just make sure that you familiarize yourself with what's out there, um, what brands have good reputations, what bad uh, brands have bad reputations. You just wanna make sure that you're giving your dog the best and sometimes that does mean spending a little bit more money on food that's better quality or has more natural ingredients and it's worth it to the overall health of your dog because a lot of the times like any trace chemicals or um, toxic whatever it's so trace that it doesn't make a difference now but when you own your dog for years and years and their entire lifespan those problems show up later so you want to make sure that you're doing your research on what is best for your dog number 10 this is a list of all the dog items that you are going to need <laughs> the bare minimum um let's do it so food of course bowls for food and water Shampoo for washing your dog, wee wee pads if they're not house trained, but even just in case if you are trying to, I know for us, we're trying to um, teach Max how to be like let him roam around the apartment a little bit more while we're away. So we leave out a wee wee pad just in case he doesn't use it, he just pees on the floor, even though he's house trained. But for peace of mind, just have some for backup. Toys. Treats, lots and lots of treats, especially when you first get a dog because you're going to want to crate train them or teach them how to sit, lay down, um, teach them different commands. You're going to need lots of training treats. You'll want a brush if they have particularly long hair. Um, you want poop bags. Don't be the person that doesn't pick up your dog's poop. And then also a little poop bag holder so that you can just always have a bunch of bags attached to your leash. Um, so there's no excuse that you don't have them with you and there's no excuse not to pick up after your dog. You'll want to get them a bed or blankets. You can start in the beginning just getting like a little cheap blanket from like the dollar store or something. Dogs aren't super particular, but I know our dog, um, instead of sleeping on any blankets or anything, he would just sleep on the carpet and find cozy spots, cozy spots, <laughs> cozy spots in the carpet. 
So we got him a bed later that has more of like that kind of carpety texture and he loves it. So it's okay to wait on things like that. Um, they can sleep, you know, at your feet on your bed. I know our dog loves sleeping on our bed. He's sleeping there right now, but he actually loves his crate. Um, so even if we leave the crate open and just kind of let him sleep wherever, he'll always go to his crate. He really likes it. Speaking of, make sure you get him a crate. This is just good if you're not going to be around, even if you're just running to the grocery store, knowing that he's inside the crate and is going to be fine and can't get into anything or can't, you know, break anything while you're not there. Um, it's good peace of mind for you, but if you crate train them well, they'll also enjoy being in their crate a lot more than you might think. A leash and a collar, of course, and then also a tag, some kind of name tag that says your dog's name and has your name and contact information. This is so important and can make the difference between if your dog runs away, ending up back in a shelter or ending up, you know, somewhere else. They'll know who to contact if somebody finds him. Just put a tag on him, okay? And then a doggy gate for any space that can't be closed off with a door that you don't want your dog to get into. So this is a few, this is more for if you live in a house um, or just a generally big living space, maybe like more of a studio style space, if there's even a gate big enough to close off some of those spaces. Um, instead of putting him in like, um, I know they make little play pen things. Instead of putting him in one of those, you can just put gates up to certain entrances that you don't want him to go into. Other items that we thought about ahead of time, but I don't think a lot of people think about ahead of time, um, which we didn't even know all these things. So let me just sit down for a second. Um, a vacuum, like a good quality vacuum for vacuuming the carpets, vacuuming the sofa, the hardwood floor, like everything. We just had a hand-me-down orc vacuum that didn't have any attachments or anything. It was just like a... A simple, you know, stands upright. It even had airbags that you had to dump and replace. Still, um, it was a fluke that we ended up with a really nice shark vacuum and it was because my boss had an extra one and gave it to me um, for Christmas and we were like, this is the best thing because <laughs> we need it for a dog. That thing is so handy and it's perfect for just getting the hair out of everything. Um, getting it out of the baseboards with all the different it's great. You're going to need a vacuum, especially if you have a dog that has longer hair like ours. On the same subject of hair everywhere, you're going to want a lint roller for your clothes because dog and cat hair can get everywhere. I can't really speak on owning cats. I've never owned a cat. Matt has, but I have never, so I don't really know, like, I know the major differences. Like, cats can take themselves out, go into their litter box, but... This is dog centered, but cat hair can also get everywhere. So just make sure you have a lint roller at home and then also a small one in your purse for on the way to work so you can get the dog hair off. Make sure that you have some extra towels that are suited to their size, no matter what. And I feel like this could be a tip in itself, but even if it is rainy outside and it's gross outside, you want to be inside like all day and do not want to be outside because it's gross and rainy and wet and whatever. You still need to take your dog outside. So they're gonna get wet, like really wet. So we have a towel that we just leave right inside and this is how we know that we need a mud room in our house <laughs> in the future. But we just have a little towel and we bring him to the towel. Matt will pick him up and wrap him up and he looks like a little Jedi cause he's like hooded with the towel. And we just dry off his paws and his stomach, just whatever touches the ground basically and gets all wet and he actually has figured out how to like dry his own paws also so he'll walk up to the towel and like scratch his front legs it's really cute <laughs> but make sure you have a towel that's due to their size not just for when they go outside and get wet but also when you bathe them and need to wrap them up and get them dry we got little doggy wipes they're like these little honeydew melon scented cleaning wipes for just the rare occasion that like just his paws are dirty or he has like a spot on him on his fur or something we can just wipe him down or if he just smells bad but he's not due for a bath yet you don't want to bathe dogs too too much um so we just wipe him down so he smells better and he looks cleaner and just works really well um Another thing that you might want to shell out a little bit of money for, I mean, it might seem expensive, but it's worth it. It's definitely a good investment, are training classes for your dog. 
So I know PetSmart, I know I talk about them a lot. This video is like not sponsored or anything, but they just have a lot of resources for um, like especially puppies or new parents of puppies, um, different training classes for different age groups and um, different levels of training. And you can just take your dog and then make sure that you practice with them outside of class so that everything sticks. Puppy training classes or just any level of dog, any age of dog training classes are definitely a good investment. Um, they teach you how to train your dog if you've never trained a dog before. Matt actually worked at a PetSmart Pets Hotel in high school, so he has a lot of experience working with dogs, so I've been really lucky. Um, and he's been able to teach our dog, like, how to sit. And I don't know if we've gotten stay down because he's a shadow for sure. Um, he can lay down, roll over is a new one. He can shake hands, give high fives. He's the best. But I don't think that I could have the patience to train him, so I'm glad that Matt does it. Um, it's definitely a lot easier having a dog. This is kind of a tangent, but owning a dog with another person, with a partner, it has definitely been helpful. Um, but we were engaged when we adopted the dog, so I feel like that's definitely a good thing. You don't want to adopt an animal with somebody that you haven't been dating for a really long time. Um, or if you do, you know adopt an animal with somebody that you have just started dating or have been dated for a long time, make sure you have a conversation now um, while things are good and that you don't want to think about it, but still um, have a conversation about who's going to get the dog if you guys break up. When it comes to the items that you're getting for your dog, especially toys and treats, you need to be ready to throw some money away on things that you get for them and try with them, but that they don't like at all and just take it as it is, take it in stride. I don't know if our dog has met a toy that he didn't like, but he def definitely has a type of toy that he likes and a type of texture that he likes to chew on. So we make sure that from here on out, we just get him toys like that. Also, your dog's gonna destroy some toys and you gotta kind of cut the losses on that as well. Tip number 11 is basically just, if you're adopting a dog or rescuing a dog, um, paying attention to the description and you know, know that you can help a dog um, be more comfortable around other people. Um, it does take a lot of time, a lot of patience, um, and a lot of work with them. It is worth it um, because just helping your dog be less anxious around everyday situations, especially if like they're not comfortable with kids and you want kids, or they're not comfortable being in social settings, but you always have friends over at the house. Um, you'll want them to get used to other people and you'll want to help them socialize. But a lot of the um, shelter descriptions of dogs will have that information in there um so it's definitely important to pay attention to that even if it's the cutest dog you've ever seen if they can't stand kids and you want kids or you have kids it's not worth it um there's another dog that is better suited for you um and another family that might be better suited for the dog so just make sure that you're paying attention to those kinds of things and if you feel like you want to take a stab at helping them adjust into a different situation Make sure that you talk to maybe like a professional trainer or somebody else before you adopt the dog for their advice on that particular subject, but just be ready to spend time and work with them on that. And then finally, number 12, I can shut the book for this one. It's pretty straightforward. Dogs are the best. They're like the best. So tip 12 is just when you do bring a dog home finally, to soak up like every second that you possibly can with them. Uh, humans don't deserve dogs. Like they're so pure and wonderful to this world. And they're just like, I'm going to cry because they're so cute. Um, dogs are seriously the best. Like they exist to love us. Like once we own them, I mean, they can be strong and dependent. We made up a backstory for our rescue dog that like he roam the streets and like nothing bad ever happened to him but he just like is very street smart and like street savvy and like very independent and strong you know so that's our backstory for him I try not to think about the fact that he doesn't have a tail so at one point like his tail was removed but you know he's a very 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 sweet dog he's a very sweet dog and um there are times, I mean, he has peed on the floor twice this past week, even though he's been house trained for months. And um, he started to chew up my microphone for my camera and managed to get like a little puncture with his canine teeth in there. So there's just like a little hole in it. 
But, you know, if we don't listen to him when he cries to take him out, he's going to pee. That's on us. If we leave our stuff on the floor, that's on us. If he gets scared because we left him alone, like it just takes practice and time and patience and giving him more opportunities to be more comfortable being alone in the apartment. It just, it takes a little bit of work and a little bit of patience and then also work on our part, keeping our apartment clean and keeping stuff off the floor, which as I look at my floor, there's stuff everywhere and he doesn't eat it, but still he could if he wanted to. Um, and you'll figure out the things that your dog wants to chew on versus the things they don't want to chew on. But you can't get mad at dogs for stuff like that. They're dogs. They don't know. And if that's something that's going to bother you, then a dog might not be the right animal for you. Or you might not be as much of an animal person as you think that you are. And that's totally okay. And I hope that, you know, <laughs> no part of this video comes off as, like, judgmental of any way that you raise your dog or any way that you live your life. Like... Whatever way that you live your life is the right way to live your life. Um, but it's so important that if you are accustomed to a certain lifestyle and that's what's important to you, if you're going to bring another person or another animal into that lifestyle, they have to be suited for it or you have to be suited for them. So they either need to adapt or you need to adapt. And a person can adapt, but an animal cannot adapt as easily. So it's just something to think about. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Like I said, if you have any more tips that you think people could benefit from, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear them myself. Um, and I'm sure that people would enjoy to read them. Um, dogs are the best. Like I said, they deserve the best, which is why I want to make this video. Um, it's okay to not be ready for a dog yet, even though other people your age are getting dogs. Um, it's a lot better to wait and be in a situation where you can care for that dog and take care of that dog than to adopt them and then be stuck in a situation where they're not being cared for. So you guys are great. Thank you for watching this video. I know that you guys are responsible dog owners or very excited and enthusiastic. And obviously if you care about animals, if you care about your dog and your dog having the best life or your future dog having the best life, that's why you've watched this video up to this point. So. You're golden. You're great. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.